It travels at the speed of light. Millions of people depend upon it. Wires carry it to distant cities. It's the energy lifeblood of the country. It's electricity. We're visiting the Jim Bridger Power Station near Rock Springs, Wyoming. It's a huge facility. And any explanation of its operation uses words such as thousands and millions. Prefixes like kilo and mega are also required. Multiplying numbers containing thousands and millions together creates so many zeros that we've developed a mathematical shorthand to manage the numbers. They're called exponents. What a great place to explore math. The Jim Bridger power station burns coal. The resulting fire converts water to steam, which turns the turbine and the generator and creates electricity. It seems pretty simple on the surface, but there's an awful lot of machinery and a lot of workers to support just one turbine generator. This plant operates four generators. This is a fossil fired uh, power plant, so we need coal in order to operate. And we get coal from numerous sources. Uh, one of which is our own company owned mine which is to the east of us here and then uh, there's another mine to the south it, just across the interstate and uh, that company also owns a, a mine to our west. It comes in on this overland conveyor into our system here and then from there we can distribute it at different places. A lot of money's tied up in just providing fuel to this powerhouse so that we can produce uh, electricity. Now this station will, uh, at full load, will consume approximately 29,000 ton per day. Coal for three of the power station's four generators comes up this conveyor. The fourth generator has its own. Every hour, each generator uses over 500,000 pounds of coal. From the conveyor, coal drops into silos. Then it's pulverized, crushing the coal into a fine dust. Coal dust is blown into the boiler to create a 3,000 degree fireball. Because of the quantities of water being heated to high pressure steam, it takes a huge boiler. Outside, there are catwalks for maintenance access. From the top, the view is pretty impressive. In the boiler, water is heated to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 4 million pounds of it per hour. The resulting high pressure steam is shot into the primary turbine, then reheated for injection into the secondary turbine. This is the turbine deck. Uh, this is unit one. As you can see, there are two other uh, turbine generators on down the deck, and then there's a fourth on down that you can't see. This station has a combined capacity of over 2,000 megawatts. Each unit is a 500 plus megawatt unit. Uh, we, we probably generate all oh, 530, 540 megawatts per, uh, net. So uh, they are pretty good, pretty good sized units. Well, right now we're burning 540,000 pounds of coal an hour to produce 555 megawatts of power per hour. A term called a megawatt hour helps station controllers determine the efficiency of their operations. You're running 557 megawatts, but then at the top of the hour, it'll start at zero, and as you go all the way through, for the whole hour, you'll net, well, my auxiliaries are 27 megawatts, so I'm netting around 530 to 535 megawatts. So after an hour, then you get your, your reading, and that'll be how many megawatts you produced, a net megawatt hour. 
The auxiliaries Charles spoke of include electric motors for conveyors, crushers, pumps, control room power, cooling tower needs, electric lights, and electricity used by the generator unit itself to generate more electricity. Control operators keep tabs on the operation of the turbines and all the support equipment necessary to keep each generator running smoothly. A loss of one generator would create brownouts and blackouts for millions of people in the Pacific Northwest. To reuse the steam, it must be converted back to water. This, this is the cooling tower for Unit 2, this is directly here behind me. We have four of these cooling towers. Uh, we use a cooling tower like the radiator, radiator on a car. Uh, this system here takes water and cools the closed water system on the boiler and condenses it back to water so pumps can pump it and start it through the process of make it into steam again. So we have a couple of 2,500 horsepower motors uh, on top of pumps over here that push that water up over the top and it goes into a hot water base and distributes it drops it down through, as you can see happening here behind me, and the uh, natural draft of the, and, and the, the coupled with the fans pulls air through and, and creates a big evaporative cooler. As you can see, the numbers at the Jim Bridger power station are big. To write these numbers out requires a lot of zeros. But we can work with a form of mathematical shorthand to make those numbers easier to write and easier to work with. Let's do some math. 